Welcome to Disrespectfully Agree with Oatman and LJ. I am LJ. Across from me is Mr. Mike Oatman. I am Oatman off the great from this point on. That's how I choose to be addressed. Across from me is Oatman. <laughs> uh, fair warning, there will be spoilers in this episode for the death of Stalin. This film comes to us from Armando Iannucci. I'm probably getting that incorrect. His fellow collaborators on this, David Schneider, Ian Martin, Peter Fellows. Uh, Ian Martin he's worked with before on uh, previous projects, including Veep, The Thick of It, and In the Loop. This thing stars Steve Buscemi as Khrushchev, Michael Palin as Molotov, Jeffrey Tambor as Malenkov. Those are some of the big names in this thing, Oatman. What's your reaction? Isn't, isn't it Steve Buscemi Khrushchev? Isn't that what I said? Okay, yeah. Yeah, Buscemi's Khrushchev. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I loved it. Really? Really enjoyed it. Why? I just think this is a very uh, neglected part of Russian history. I mean, oftentimes when we see pieces or conversations, oftentimes there is sort of that exploration of uh, that post era in which Lenin was ruling and he gets sick and then there's the power grab and we have Stalin on one side and then we have Trotsky on the other, the idealist versus the practical guy. We sort of see that sort of squabble. This sort of explores that time after Stalin dies and there was probably a far more interesting... Wait, Stalin died in this? I'm sorry? Spoilers, man. You got to tell me. I was... Oh, sorry. Spoilers. What's... Uh, I didn't realize that's what this movie was about. You saw it, didn't you? I saw the title. You didn't see the movie? No, I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> you son of it's man. death of Stalin. I'm just <laughs> messing around. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm a little slow on the uptake. But yeah, it, it, it explores that period after Stalin uh, died and you have all these people jockeying. Wait, Stalin dies in this? You son of a bitch. Yes, he does. Oh, Spoiler right. alert. And uh, <laughs> spoilers, everybody. Stalin dies in the film. Yes, and uh, I just, I just love the idea that we're actually looking at uh, this period where all these Russian, um, essentially oligarchs, are fighting for power in the in the wake of Stalin's death. And what's what's so great about it is that unlike when Lenin died, when Lenin died, you had all these titans, you had these intellectual, even Stalin to some degree was sort of this strong, powerful guy. But what you were essentially have at the, at the death of Stalin, you get these basically these low ranking mealy mouth bureaucrats, yeah. none of them worthy to occupy the, the throne, scheming and trying to climb yeah, over. Sycophants who were left. The, absolutely. That's who, <laughs> absolutely. His biggest rival is obviously long gone. Long gone. And, and it's sort of like after the fall of the empire. It was wonderful. And, and, and I love the lens that the director used to tell the story. He essentially is using ab realism. So ab realism is sort of uh, a place in which it's a fairly realistic setting, but anything is possible. Think uh, drunk history. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially what this is, sort of a sort of an exaggerated reality uh, with sort of these uh, built in comic overtones to it. Wonderful vehicle. Now, I want to I want to go off of that point then. Drunk history, I think, is an excellent touchstone here because uh, drunk history started on the Internet and they, there's obviously money involved in making those things, but it wasn't a lot. Once they got to Comedy Central, the production improved. Yeah. And I definitely. think the comedy lessened as a result. Look at Saturday Night Live as another example of tremendous amount of money and effort taken to make things look good. True. A lot of makeup, a lot of masks, a lot of wigs, uh, a lot of, a lot of money is in effort, costumes and everything. And it kind of makes it less funny. There's one thing that, uh, this, David Cross and, um, Bob Odenkirk, uh, did with their show, uh, Mr. Show was remove a lot of that. All that really matters are the jokes themselves, and people will fill in the gaps. Look at another example of Monty Python. The crappier it looked, in many ways, the less money they had, the funnier it was. This movie I disagree seems... with that. I disagree with that fundamental point. I think that's that fanboy perspective, where it's almost just cooler for it to look like dog shit. And I, I don't believe in it's that. It's not cooler. I think I it's think, funnier. I think, I think Saturday Night Live is hilarious. I think they have many funny skits on it that are just break down hilarious. I don't, I don't think, I don't think the two correlate. I think either you can write or you can't. I think it's funny or it's not. Now, I don't think that money is 
is a supplicant for funny. I don't think it can replace funny or induce it, but I don't think it hurt it, it hurts it either. Either it's funny or it's not. Yeah, but I think if it looks, if they put a lot of effort, now I'm not saying like the idea of making it look crappy uh, on purpose isn't what I'm going for. It's the it's the amount of time it looks so slick. It looks so well produced. It looks so real, as it were, that the comedy almost feels out of place I in this movie. I strongly disagree with that. I, I, I just don't think that. I think either you have talent. When it's talent in writing, it could be in a cardboard box or it can be in a limousine. Well, let's talk about the writing then. This film struck me as it's almost in the category I created, a different kind of genre. People call this thing a comedy. I don't. I think this is an amusity. It's amusing. <laughs> An amusity. An amusing. Boy, does that roll off the tongue, LJ? Hey, I'm allowed to say, I'm allowed <laughs> to make a mount. It's amusing. So it's a, it, it's amusing. I think there's one moment in particular. It's a Michael Palin moment in the boardroom. They're having a meeting. It's kind of the most Python esque scene in the film. Oh, and that yeah. moment actually was funny. I think that was genuinely funny. There's maybe two other, one or two other parts that I was like, okay, that's funny. But for the most part, I'm like, oh, I see intellectually why this is amusing. What you've done here is clever, but the the comedy, it doesn't really elevate too funny at most of the film for me. I I think it was very funny, but I don't think it was meant to be funny in a, um, I don't think it's supposed to be just a broad comedy. I think it's. I didn't say broad, just a comedy. Yeah, but I don't think it's just a comedy. I think it's, it's using a comic lens to actually look at a fairly serious... I absolutely agree. But I also think they're trying to be funny. Yeah, I think there are parts where they're trying to be funny, but it works for me. I, I think that it was funny. I thought Steve Buscemi was great as Khrushchev. It's so ridiculous, but I thought it was... His cast as Khrushchev was brilliant. I mean, I, I just thought it was brilliant. Very funny. Tells the story. It mixes in some really uh, fairly dramatic scenes that happen. It mixes in violence. It mixes in oppression. But it does it in a way in which it all makes sense within that universe. I just thought that was... Good stuff. Yeah. It, Solid film. It, it, it's a weird line for them to walk because yeah. there is the character of Beria. Am I saying that right? Yeah, Beria. Beria. He's a monster. Yeah, the head of the secret police where he's just murdering and raping. Murdering, raping, all that. He's an absolute monster. And they do show some of that. Our first introduction to his little headquarters where it's all going on is is supposed to be comical, but it's also... But I don't think that's supposed to be just comical. I think, no, I agree. I, I agree. we're that, supposed to feel my the point is, of that horror. I absolutely agree. And that's where I think, unfortunately, it's hard to laugh in those moments. It's hard to find the comedy. It's absurd and cleverly done. But rarely is it funny. And there are several points, especially in the last, say, half hour of the movie, where comedy's just out the window, of co- as, of course, you might expect. There's no jokes to be had, although I think there are moments where they're still trying. But it's just so brutal and dark that uh, it's another. It's neither fish nor fowl. It, it's trying to do so many things. I'm not sure it succeeds at any one of them. Mm, I would disagree with that. But we mentioned drunk history. I think drunk history does the same thing. It tells oftentimes very dark stories. Stories, but I don't. I'm never rolling on the floor when I watch drunk history because oftentimes it's a real history. I I agree. I don't anymore either. I used to <laughs> when it was on the internet when they had less money when it seemed like more of a labor of love or it seemed like they had more heart in it. It's it's once they added more money to it, it just felt like less of a product. I just think that's a bias to money. I think that there is a set of. I think it's a bias towards comedy. I disagree. I think there's a set of fans that no matter what it is, if you clean it up and you make it bigger or something in which you expand the club. Comedy needs those edges, those hard, rough edges. It needs them. I disagree with that. The slicker it is, the less funny it is. I disagree with that. I, I think I think funny can be a lot of different things. I think funny can be edgy and this and that. I don't think it has to be that. I just think there is a certain set of, I call it fanboy culture, where fanboys How dare like, you. like being inside of their little club Mm -hmm. and if you open oh it's just because you've been scarred by this recently (laughs) (laughs) and if you let anybody into that fanboy club it's just because you're not in the club man that's all this is (laughs) this is sour grapes 
This is you being upset. Hey, guys, you're at the door. Let me in. Let me in. I'm not part of the club. No, you're not. Get out. They immediately dislike it almost (laughs) just because it's big. Not because it's not quality. Like, I'll hear people, they'll say, ah, Beyonce is a terrible singer. No, she's not. No, she's not. No. She's a good singer. But she's just big. You know, she's just well-funded. I mean. Yeah, that's, yeah, I agree. That's a different thing. And I think it's, but I think it's part of that culture. Like, the the second it becomes popular and everybody are talking about it, they instantly This lose. is not a band thing, though, of, look, man, you know, I love Radiohead before they were big, and now that they're, <laughs> now everybody's loving, into Radiohead, I don't care. Everything they do is terrible. That's not I this. Think, I mean, you're talking about comic I book movies. I think if they would have shot this same, The same people you're talking about love the hell out of Black Panther. If they would have shot this thing with a goddamn iPhone and released it bootleg on the video, on, on video somewhere, you discovered it on the internet, you'd love this movie. If it was sort of a grainy shot on an iPhone underground thing, I think that, you'd like this movie But there's more. something to be said for that kind of tone. There's something to be said for tone. And the tone this movie sets is not that funny. I, I think it... I am, I agree that it is not drop down hilarious, and I'm not saying that it's a it's the greatest film ever. I'm saying it's a good film. I think it's an ambitious film. Absolutely. I think it's trying to do something and walk a really tough line. Yes. And I'm just saying for what they were trying to do, this is a pretty good movie. I mean, this is a really hard line that they're trying to do. This Absolutely. is the kind of film that, as a film lover, I want to encourage people to make. I agree. Th- this is the the kind of film, and this is it's a very interesting failure. It's I don't a, think it was a failure. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to the extreme. I'm not saying it's a failure. And my point <laughs> sorry. I, was, I apologize. You, you I was being provocative. Be, you are a fascinating failure. I was being provocative. Uh, no, you are the cutest ugly chick yes. I have ever laid my eyes Your on. Your face is very interesting. <laughs> In a horrific kind of way. You are a handsome person, let me tell you. Uh no, but th- there's, but there's, but there's also something to that. That like the most attractive woman in the in the world has the most plain, hard to recognize face. There's once you remove a lot of the character of a face, it quote unquote becomes more beautiful, but it becomes less interesting. You can't remember them as well. I agree. With uh, that. It, uh, it's Jennifer those Gray. edges. Jennifer Gray. Jennifer Gray. There you go. Dirty Dancing. She was beautiful. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Fixed but her nose. We no. can't recognize her. Right. And that's how it works. There's also something very attractive. I've always said that Julia Roberts is one chromosome away from being ugly. <laughs> I mean, one little twerk of the gods, that would be an ugly young lady. But uh, before we get too far down on judging women. Um, <laughs> Just saying. Character in a face, I think, matters. I think that is attractive. I think to a lot of people that that is what they're looking for. And it's also what did, what did you, true of this what film. What did you think of Bashimi? Didn't care for him. At all. I wanted to, I, when I saw Bashemi, I'm like, oh, okay, all right, let's, let's follow this. But it was still so much of what he's done. He was so Bashemi. This was something that he had done? It, he felt like Bashemi playing Khrushchev. Well, he is Bashemi playing I know. And, and, that's, and that's an unfair critique. <laughs> but Yes, you're making it. Yeah, I am. Okay. It's, I did not enjoy his portrayal of okay. Khrushchev. I did not. There's one moment he had. I'll give him one moment. Okay. This was another moment where I actually chuckled was the moment at the funeral when he was trying to make that move. Yeah, he's trying to move down the yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to move down the line. That was good. I'll give him that. That was a good moment. What about moment. Jeffrey Tambor? You didn't love that? I did not. You're kidding. I love Tambor. Love him. And you didn't like that role? No. With the hair and Mm-mm. he's he's getting more beautiful as the as the as the movie goes forward? No. I, th- I just thought those were some wonderful performances. I I wanted to. I wanted you have a heart. This of was stone. for me. It, I was disappointed at the beginning. It was like Michael. Pa- oh, right, great. Michael Palin's in this. Yeah. Awesome. And one of the first things we learned about him is, oh, you can say goodbye to him. Thank God <laughs> that didn't happen because he has the best moments in the movie. He has some great moments. And if we're more of that, and, and I, I think I think, Barry had I think the putting best moments. weirdly putting sure he had great moments, but those are dramatic. And despicable and, and all of that. And, and as they were supposed to be, as intended, not saying that they failed in that. If we want to look at this as a comedy, as the marketers are, as the filmmakers are, as audiences are taking it, this film suffers in a weird way from having Michael Palin in it. What? 
What? Because that's insanity. It instantly draws comparisons. Hang up, hang hold up on, your hold on, and get out. Hold on. How do you suffer from having Michael? Because Palmer it instantly in draws comparisons to much better comedies from the Monty Python crew. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it does not. That's it makes ridiculous. me. It sets an expectation for something much funnier. Uh, oh, stop it! This is not a Monty Python. I know. This has. N- this is nothing in here that compares to Monty. Python. Well, that's not true. This, what? This is. This bears very much a similarity to things like Life of Brian. No, it does not. Absolutely. How, how so? Political absurdism. No, but I'm talking about the lens in which this story is told. It's not Monty Python. You want to go back to Life of Brian? It's about sure. a crucifixion, sir. I, but yeah, I know what the life it's about. <laughs> it's about, it's about a crucifixion. Is. It's about leading people astray. It's about religion well, run amok. You, well, since it's you about love, po- politicians, people, political movements who there, don't stand for anything, don't there, know what they stand there for. There are certain cabinet meetings. There are certain fingerprints that cannot be replicated. It's sort of like Prince. I don't care if you play guitar and you play a little funk. Nobody's Prince. Nobody sounds like Prince. Nobody compares to Prince. I got. I got. You, I got bad news for you. What's that? Prince isn't good. <laughs> Prince isn't good. Prince is a fantastic artist. His okay, music well, is this. terrible. Let's do this. <laughs> I just pissed off everybody listening to this. I'm sorry. I'm not going to fight you on that. <laughs> Let's say that Prince is not good. I'm going to accept you. No, he's a fantastic. He's, you're he's a talent. I'm going to say Let's say Prince is a talent. His music is bad. I'm going to re- I'm going to accept your ridiculous premise. But yeah. my point is, bad or not. It's distinctive. When you hear Prince is Prince. Yeah. And so nobody. It makes me, and I, so I'm like, oh, what's, is, what the hell's that on my radio? So my I got to turn is, that off. Nobody is going to say, hey, Prince sounds like this guy. Nobody's going to compare anybody to Prince because nobody sounds like Prince. Nobody sounds like Monty Python. Nothing is Monty Python. Nothing fits in that thing. So even if you have people who were part of Monty Python, nobody carries that expectation into a film because it's not Monty Python. I wasn't expecting Monty Python. I was expecting funnier. Well, that's fair. That's fair. But I don't think the fact that Michael Palin's in it, you're like, man, this isn't close to Monty Python. Nobody. No, I agree. I said it sets an expectation for things to be funnier. It does not. It did for me. I, I think it's, it's its own thing. So it's one of those things where it's such a weird lens that they're using to tell this story that that all expectation goes out of the window anyway. Because how many people use an ab realism lens to tell? Let a me story? say one more thing I like about the movie. What's that? That is good. That was fantastic. Oh, the dude who plays the general. My you know goodness. what? I'm going to have to cut that out because I'm ruining the jokes of the movie. That's I'm cutting <laughs> That's that good. out. What about the dude who plays the general? Is that not awesome? Uh, yeah, he's a great actor, though. Oh, I mean, he's uh, yes, yeah, you're from, right from from uh, uh, Star Trek Discovery. Yes, he's in that. He's also the bad guy in the Patriot. Patriot. You may recall. Oh wow, man! Yeah. You went back on me for uh, millennials. He's in the Harry Potter movies as well. <laughs> that he's great in the film. He's great. Absolutely. When he, when he I comes agree. on, he's, he literally, and this is. You know, if the movie were, if he was a bigger part of this movie, I think it's a better film. I would agree with that because I think he steals every scene that he does. he's in. He's great. Absolutely. Or the scene where he. Great <laughs> moment. Great moment. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's good stuff. So, yeah, I, I, I think this film, go out, see it early, see it often. It's very ambitious. To be fair, I almost saw it again. I uh, I, I, I saw the <laughs> you first You hated thing. it so much. You well, wanted to see I, it No, I, I didn't hate it. I, look, let's. Put the hate thing aside for a second. Okay, you this is not a good or bad binary thing. Okay, I I will even though you I you said it wasn't funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I do I did enjoy it. I do think it's well done for in a. You finally come to my side. No. Come hug me. Come. No, me no, no, no. I can't. To there's me. too many equipment. There's too much equipment here. Let me <laughs> let me quell your pain. Come to me. I did almost go back to the theater. I ran out. I actually ran out of time before the recording. But I was like, "Why don't I like this?" And I needed to. <laughs> I I felt like I gotta see this again. I gotta why go back. Why not like this? Why doesn't this work for me? Like I I suspect I'll, it's gonna work for I'll everybody. I'll answer your else. question because you're an effing curmudgeon. That's right. You're a curmudgeon. You take you take candy canes from little babies on the beach. You're a curmudgeon. What? You're the guy who keeps the football when it comes over the fence. You're that guy. Well, it shouldn't be on my side of the fence. <laughs> You're a cinematic curmudgeon. And I'm doing that baby a favor. That child should not have a candy cane. <laughs> that parent is being irresponsible. All right, fair point. Thank you. <laughs> 
That said, go see Death of Stalin, everybody. <laughs> did we do it? Yeah, that, I think we did it done. All right, that's it for us this week. We'll talk at you next time. All right, peace and chicken grease, everybody. Peace. Peace.